Blue Jays fans, oh, it is that time of year. Spring training's over. Thank God. Gets to that point about halfway through where you're like, okay, let's get this thing rolling. And we're finally here. Blue Jays baseball gets going tomorrow. 4-10 first pitch. I believe it's still called Bush Stadium, isn't it? In St. Louis, Missouri. Between the Blue Jays and the Cardinals. Very weird that the Jays start their season in St. Louis, of all places. But it is what it is. And with the new scheduling, with you playing everybody at least once, you're going to have to do that at some point. So the Jays do it right away at 4-10 against... Uh, so, so uh, was it uh, Miles Mikolas? Gets the start for them, and it's still called Bush Stadium. There you go. And, you can't see it because it's on the back of me, but Alec Manoa gets the ball for the Blue Jays in Game 1. He gets named the opening day starter, which it lines up to be that he will get the home opener start on April 11th. And I gotta be honest with you, it doesn't really feel like the season's about to start. I think the reason why, and I was talking to J.D. Bunkus earlier on the on Blue Jays Center, uh, Blue Jays Center excuse me, and if you want to check that out, go check out Blue Jay Center on Instagram. And I had a great chat with JD, about 30, 35 minutes worth. So if you have some, if you have some time and you want to hear JD stuff, uh, check it out. You know, it was great. I had a chat with him and I told him, hey, it's weird. It doesn't feel like the season's like right there. I don't know if it's for me being a huge Leaf fan and a Raptor fan. They're getting right into the real season. So it doesn't really feel like baseball's right around the corner, but it is. And we're beyond excited to get this thing started. Lots of expectations, but a lot of intrigue as well. This Blue Jays team is going to be very interesting to watch this year. And what I mean by that is they're going to win games in ways we didn't see last year. First off, they have a bunch of lefty hitters. At least to start the season, barring any injuries, touch wood, touch any part of the wall, I guess. But they have guys like Kevin Kiermeyer. Remember last year, Jays fans, where we have a guy at second, right? Extra innings, for example. You have a, at home. You have a guy at second, nobody out. You're thinking, well, you know, like to bunt a guy over and then get him in. Well, if your number nine spot's up first, you don't have to try and pinch hit a guy and have him attempt to bunt like an Espinal, and Biggio, Danny Jansen. How many times last year have we seen that and us be like, oh my God, this is awful to watch. Kevin Kiermeyer on the regular, will bunt for base hits. <laughs> he can do that. Whit Merrifield, we have seen it. He can do it. He's got the speed. This year is going to be very interesting. You added left-handed batter Brandon Belt. You added Dalton Varsho. Sure, you lost Lourdes Gurriel Jr. You lost Teoscar Hernandez. What do those two guys have in common? They are awful defensively. And people are going to say, well, you know, Guriel has a great arm. He does. You know why he has to use that great arm? Because he puts himself in horrendous positions. With a guy like Dalton Varsho in left, Kiermeyer in center, George in right, the defense is elite to start the year in the outfield. You have Chapman at third, Vladdy just won a gold glove at first, with Merrifield and Espinal and Biggio a little bit, they're going to be fine at second base. Now, what is Bo Bichette going to give you? And that's something, hey, we'll wait and see. And we all know the way Danny Jansen can work a pitching staff. We all know how Alejandro Kirk does with framing. The defense from the Toronto Blue Jays is remarkable. They said it going into the offseason. They wanted to create run prevention. They did that. They added Chris Bassett, who love Ross Stripling, but it's the exact same situation. And shout out JD for pointing this earlier. And I actually thought about it. I'm like, dang, you know why? That's actually very right. It was exactly the Robbie Ray to Kevin Gosman situation. Robbie Ray pitched very well for the Blue Jays that one year, won the Cy Young Award. Fantastic. That was just one good season. And you're like, okay, that's great, but you can't he do it again. And are you willing to give this guy this big payday for that? Kevin Gosman has done it for multiple years. And is pitched in the AL East. And he knows what it takes. He's on the right side. He's got a great split. It's a repeatable delivery, all that stuff. They signed Kevin Gosman. 
We all know what Kevin Gosman did for the Blue Jays last year. Robbie Ray, I think, would he lead the league in home runs allowed? With a minute, with a certain amount of uh, innings pitched? He was still decent. The Jays lit him up in the wild card game, albeit we know how it ended, but he did that. He got lit up. And Kevin Gosman's time with the Blue Jays. No one's talking about it. Ross Stripling, great last year. It was just one good season, though. Right? He started the year as a swingman. That tells you everything. Didn't make the rotation. Tells you why. Now, he was outstanding. Nothing against chicken strips. He was a remarkable story. The Jays would never have got to where they were last year if it wasn't for him. But if you're the Blue Jays, do you bank on Ross Stripling and pay him? I mean, he didn't get paid a lot, but do you pay Ross Stripling and bank on him doing that again next season? Or do you pay the guy who's been consistent for basically his entire career in Chris Bassett? Well, you go for the consistency in Chris Bassett. So they do that, right? For me, I look at the X factor in that rotation and it's Jose Barrios. You give me a 4-2 ERA, a 4 ERA, 3-9 in that range. This team has one of the best rotations in all of baseball, assuming they stay healthy. Because last year... The top three were great when they were healthy, of course. When Ross Stripling was was Ross Stripling. Manoa, Gosman, great all year. Phenomenal. Barrios, he got a ton of run support, but his numbers were atrocious. Now, I don't think they can get that bad again because let's be honest, that's really hard to do. <laughs> so I can't see that happening again for Jose. But if you give me a 3-9 to 4-2 ERA in that range... This team will be significantly better. And of course, that five spot, Yusei Kikuchi, everyone's drooling over the spring training numbers. Crumble that up and throw it out. It's spring training. Doesn't mean a damn thing. He can go get lit up in his first outing, and we're sitting here like, uh, oh, mm. so spring training numbers are still a thing? No, they don't mean a damn thing. However, they were fun to watch. They were good to, to remind us that, oh, he, he can do it. He is capable. The problem never was the stuff for Yusei Kikuchi. It was between the ears. But with the new pitch clock and him having to work quickly, you don't have time to think. You throw a ball, you grab it, you throw you throw another one. You throw a strike this time. You throw a ball, don't worry. 2-0, oh, doesn't matter. Fire went in there, 2-1. and one. You don't stand there, rub a ball, think, look in the crowd, start freaking out, look in the dugout, everyone sitting at the top step worrying. You see John Schneider stepping out, ready to pull him out of the game. Then he starts sweating. You walk a guy in four pitches. No, you don't have time for that anymore. So for Yusei Kikuchi, that's a plus for him. The question is, will he be able to execute pitches? He has a swing and miss. We've seen it all in spring training. We even saw it last year. He has the swing and miss stuff. It's location and here. We'll see what happens offensively, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of different moving parts in the lineup. Vladdy, I think it's going to help him a ton having a lot of lefties because the pitchers are going to have to pitch differently or they won't be able to get in just a consistent rhythm one through nine, one through nine, one through nine. No, they're going to have to go one, two, three righties, but they're great hitters. Then lefty, righty, lefty, righty, righty, lefty. And you're like, whoa, okay. Can't get in a rhythm that way. That's why Luis Castillo was so good, albeit he had great stuff, but he was facing all righties. You're going to get crushed over there when you fire a lefty out there. It's what? You know, Rymel Tapia and Kevin Biggio? Like, really? So, it's going to be a very interesting season. The bullpen has definitely gotten better. Is it complete? No. With Nate Pearson not making the team, don't be surprised within the next month he's back. He's here. I think the Jays want him to go down there to Buffalo for the first few weeks, stay healthy, and dominate. You do that, you'll make your way to the big leagues. Shout out Nathan Lucas for making the 26th man of the roster, but don't know how long that'll last. Because he won't play much. Nothing against the guy, just where where are you going to put him? It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out, Jays fans. But look, I'm going to wrap it up with this. Because this is all about discussion for you guys in the comments. Baseball gets started tomorrow. 4-10 4-10 first pitch at Bush Stadium in St. Louis between the Jays and the Cardinals. I cannot wait. The last time we saw this team play a baseball game on a meaningful field, they blew up against the Mariners and they just 
we all know what happened there. It's the start of a new season. Let's get it rolling. All right. So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and the game. No, there's no game yet, but there will be tomorrow. Hit the like button if you guys enjoyed the video. Hit that subscribe button if you guys not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the video. Thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like from uh, the video? And if it's something that I missed that you want to talk about, let me know in the comments. Twitter and Instagram links are down below. So follow up there if you guys not done so already. The Discord and all new TikTok down below. Check it out uh, as I've been trying to get out. Trying to get out. Stay on there as, as often as possible. So, I will talk to you guys, Raptors edition, God, now that everybody's playing, I can't just say Jays on Wednesday and we're about the other teams, uh, the Raptors play Friday in Philly at 7, the Leafs play tonight against the Panthers at 7, and the Blue Jays start the regular season portion, finally, tomorrow. 4-10 first pitch at Bush Stadium. Alec Manoa gets the ball against Mike Mikolas. Obviously, you know Adam Rainwright. He's injured, so Mikolas is going to get the start. Can't wait. All right, so thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and are jacked up for baseball to get going. I'll talk to you guys then.